All we like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. By his wounds we are healed. Now, dear brothers and sisters in, in Christ our Savior, these, these past few months we've really been able to focus our attention on ministry here at Northdale as four of our five <coughs> teachers have received calls to, to teach in other schools as our principal accepted a call to, to work in another field of labor and as we've extended a call to a new principal who's going to be coming this summer to work alongside of us in gospel ministry. At, at the very least, we've been able to really focus our attention on those shepherds, those workers that God sends to, to tend to his flock. And while this very intense focus may be beneficial for us in the end, it can be quite unsettling as we go through it. But it's easy at those times to start getting a little bit anxious and, and uncomfortable and fearful about the future and start asking questions like, hey God, what's going on? What are you doing to us? Why are you making us so unsettled by having to, to think about losing called workers that we're connected to and, and bringing in new ones we don't know? But I'd be lying if I said thoughts like that hadn't popped through my mind. We, we get connected to our, our workers. And, and, and it can rock us a little bit to think about losing them. We can start to see them as the key to success and the, the bridge to growth for the future. We can get focused on the immediate loss before us and let anxiety and, and fear about the unknown start to build inside of us. We, we have that connection and that can be a good thing. But to think about them leaving can leave us quite unsettled. Today we are reminded of that connection that we have first and foremost with our good shepherd. And more than any worth, earthly worker, more than a connection to any earthly shepherd, is the connection you and I have to our good shepherd. The one who promised to, to watch over us and to protect us and to guide us as we wander through the pasture of life. And who promised to send faithful shepherds who will continue to direct us to the truths of his word. In the end, we're reminded that what matters most is that, that connection we have with our Good Shepherd. Today's Good Shepherd Sunday. That phrase, Good Shepherd, just calls to mind everything that Jesus did in sacrificing himself to bring us into his flock and all that he continues to do in his love and care for us to, to, to keep us in his flock, not only in this life, but also in the life to come. For centuries, that title of Good Shepherd has helped Christians to, to celebrate and to cheer and to be comforted. So on this Good Shepherd Sunday today, with the text that stands before us, we have the opportunity to be reminded of God's great love. And continuing to send true, faithful shepherds who point us to the truth of His Word. We're reminded what, what makes someone a true shepherd and why Jesus is the good shepherd. And through all of this, we are encouraged. Trust in your good shepherd. <laughs> Let's keep that thought in mind as we turn to our text. It's the gospel lesson for today. It's from the gospel of John, chapter 10, the first 10 verses. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way as a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. 
All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So far the words of our God. Now while Jesus' words were spoken publicly so that everyone who was present could hear, they were specifically directed at the religious leaders of the people that we know to be the Pharisees. Really, for us to understand these words, it's good to go get some background and in context as we look back at, at chapter 9. Jesus had just healed a man who had been born blind. But right after that healing, the Pharisees started investigating that. At first, they refused to believe that it could have been some sort of a miraculous healing. Yet as their investigation went on, they found out they really couldn't deny that a miracle had taken place. And so they began badgering this man who had formerly been blind, asking him again and again to explain what had happened. They, they insulted and they threatened him. You see, they just couldn't give Jesus the credit for healing this man miraculously. If they did, that would be them admitting that there was more to Jesus than they wanted him to be. And when that man continued to point them back to Jesus as the source of that healing, and when he went so far even as to suggest that because Jesus had done this healing, it was obvious he must have come from God, that's when they finally had enough. We're told they threw him out of the temple, which in our day would be tantamount to excommunicating him from the church. And in so doing, they proved what bad shepherds they were. I mean, here they, they excommunicate a man from the church just because he was healed miraculously of his blindness and they condemned the Christ who had done the work. They were showing themselves to be unfit for the work they professed to do of, of shepherding God's flock. And so Jesus told this parable in our text to point out their sin and to warn everybody around of the dangers that were confronting them. He called the Pharisees thieves and robbers. You see, they weren't seeking the eternal and spiritual good of the sheep the way that a a true shepherd would. They were only seeking and robbed. That term thief would later be used to describe Judas. Carried the thought of a, a sinister sneakiness. The term robber would later be used to describe Barabbas. It carries with it the thought of a, a vicious violence. Those are some pretty strong adjectives to use in describing these men. And yet that's exactly what they were. They were stealing the faith of these people through fear and intimidation. They were robbing them of the hope that they had in forgiveness with their numerous and burdensome rules and regulations. They weren't looking out for the good of the people. They were only looking out for themselves. They were only seeking to improve their own power and Influence. They cared nothing for the sheep. They saw the sheep only as pawns that they could use to, to somehow bring benefit to themselves. And in doing so, they were leading these sheep away from Jesus and leading them down the path that would end in destruction. Unlike those who would come to kill and destroy, a true shepherd that wants to lead God's people to the fullness of life that God alone can offer. That's the whole point Jesus is making. So he uses that picture. I am the gate. It was only through Jesus as the gate that shepherds can get to God's people. In other words, it's only through Jesus' atoning work and the sacrifice that he made as our good shepherd that anyone can be saved. Jesus is making the point, I am the only Savior, the only door through which you can enter into eternal life. 
true shepherds seek to direct God's people to that door, that only door which brings eternal life. They're not there to promote themselves. They're not there to, to better themselves. They seek only the eternal welfare of the souls under their care and direct spiritual and eternal life which is so graciously granted from our good shepherd. Now as Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd, he offers some, some comforting thoughts for us. Notice what Jesus says. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Our good shepherd not only knows each one of his sheep, he's able to, to call them out by name. Just think about that. There's, what, just over 7 billion people in our world today? About one-third of them are Christians. About 31%. 2.3 billion. The Good Shepherd not only knows each one of those sheep, he knows them well enough to call them by name. That means he knows you. Personally. Individually. And not only does he know you, he cares about you. And we see that no better than in the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus that we celebrated just a few short weeks ago. What a comforting thought to know that that good shepherd who laid down his life so that the sheep can live eternally with him is the one who is reigning on heaven's throne, guiding and directing the affairs of this world for the good of his people. What a comforting thought to think that that good shepherd who was willing to give himself to rescue his people eternally has promised that he will continue to send faithful shepherds who will feed and guide his people. Pretty easy to tell the difference between a bad shepherd and a good shepherd. A good shepherd, a true shepherd, a faithful shepherd will... The one who enters through the gate will only speak the words of, of Jesus and direct people to him as their Savior. Sadly, sadly, there are many false shepherds out in our world today. I don't want to intend to just sit up here and, and cast stones today, but I think it's important that we're warned of the dangers. There are many bad shepherds out in our world today who would dare to proclaim that a little false doctrine doesn't really matter that much. Our good shepherd would say otherwise. All false doctrine is disastrous. It, it kills and destroys faith. There are many shepherds in the world today that seek to lead people to heaven without going through the gate. They may exude a, a great deal of charisma and, and, a, and a shiny happiness as they proclaim a, 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 a popular message. They may excel at works of charity. They may be very earnest and sincere. They might even mention Jesus. But it's important that we listen to their voice to see if they are speaking as the good shepherd. You see, if a shepherd were to say sin isn't all that bad, that wouldn't be the voice of Jesus. Jesus says sin kills. <laughs> If a voice were to say to you, what used to be sin is no longer sin, that wouldn't be the voice of our good shepherd. If a voice were to say, you're not all that sinful, don't worry about it, that would not be coming from our good shepherd. If a voice were to say it's, that, that you're too sinful to be loved and forgiven by God, that wouldn't be a voice coming from the good shepherd. If a voice were to say today that it's not all that important for you to be at worship, it wouldn't be the voice of Jesus. If a shepherd were to say any lifestyle is okay and it doesn't matter before God, that wouldn't be Jesus' voice speaking. If anyone were to say any religion is okay, it doesn't matter, they're all paths to the same place, that would not be the voice of your good shepherd. If the voice were to say that in addition to faith, you need to add your own good works to earn forgiveness and love with God, that would not be the voice of Jesus. Those would be the voices of thieves and robbers who have climbed up the wall of the sheep pen and are seeking to lead the sheep to destruction. 
Jesus' encouragement would be very clear to us. Run away from them. Don't follow after them. No, a true shepherd, a, a faithful shepherd, one who comes through the gate will only speak what Jesus himself has said. He will not only talk about Jesus and hold Jesus up as an example, he will proclaim Jesus to be the Savior. The one and only Savior. The Savior that you and I so desperately need. A faithful shepherd will not mince words when it comes to pointing out our sinfulness and the danger is deadly, the results that come because of our sin. A true shepherd will tell us like it is in all of its dirty horror to, to crush our sinful spirit, but a true shepherd will do that to take that crushed soul and place it in the hands of the good shepherd who laid down his life to pay the punishment that sheep deserved for his sin. To come through the gate to be a true and faithful shepherd means to proclaim the crucified and risen Jesus. To proclaim forgiveness in his blood. Eternal life through his resurrection and the good news for all of us to hear. A true shepherd will care only about the eternal welfare of the souls under his care. And continue to direct them to the living water and the life-giving word to Jesus as the only gate. Now in our world today, that sounds pretty exclusive to say that, that Jesus is the only gate. In this all-inclusive world that we live in, people get uncomfortable hearing there's only one door, one way into eternal life, and that's through Jesus. And I think if you take a closer look to it, what you find is that he's not exclusive, he is all-inclusive. Just because there's only one door doesn't mean he's exclusive. Excluding someone means leaving them out on purpose. Excluding someone would be inviting the entire class to your birthday party except two. You would be purposely excluding those two from attending. But if you invite the entire, birth, the entire class to come to your birthday party at the bowling alley, that's not exclusive. Now, if they choose to, to try and have your go to your party at another place, that would be on them. If they choose to reject the invitation, that would be on them. But your invitation was inclusive because it went out to all. And the same is true with your good shepherd. His invitation to enjoy the fullness of life that he won goes out to all people. It doesn't matter if you're a white sheep or a brown sheep or a black sheep. It doesn't matter if you are a capitalist sheep or a socialist sheep. It doesn't matter if you are a young sheep or an old sheep or a male sheep or a female sheep. It doesn't matter if you're a rich sheep or a poor sheep or a highly educated sheep or a, a, a very uneducated sheep. The Good Shepherd's invitation to enjoy the fullness of eternal life goes out to all. But only those who enter through Jesus will be saved. What a blessing that our good shepherd continues sending that invitation as he sends out true and faithful shepherds who will direct us to the truth of his word. Apart from Jesus, there is no peace, no forgiveness, no safety, no comfort, no contentment. But with Jesus, there is full and free forgiveness for your sin riddled heart. With Jesus, there is peace from the worries and troubles that come from the dangerous difficulties we face in life that would seek to overwhelm us. With Jesus, there is safety and confidence and contentment in moments when the thief would either abandon us or seek to destroy us. With Jesus, there is comfort in the face of death and encouragement from the grief that death causes. As he reminds us that he opened the door to eternal life through his open tomb. With our good shepherd, there is rest for our souls. As he takes away our worries, our stress, and our anxieties. And he replaces them with peace and hope. And 
What a blessing. The Good Shepherd continues to promise He will send His workers to feed, to guide, to direct, to protect, and encourage His sheep with that life-giving work. Trust in your Good Shepherd. He not only knows you, but He calls you by name. He not only cares about you, but he sends shepherds to proclaim his word, to lead you to the, the green pastures and life-giving waters of his word. So, yeah, it can be unsettling to think about losing earthly shepherds, be it teachers who, who shepherd the children under their care, or, or pastors who, who shepherd us as God's people. But remember what matters most is the connection you have with your good shepherd. Trust him. Trust that he will keep his promise to always watch over you spiritually and physically as he leads you through the pastures of life to the eternal life, the fullness of life that he has waiting for you. Trust in your good shepherd.